Hi, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where we're going to dive a little bit more into Podio today. Not on a specific uh, theme that we've been going through so far, but we're going to deviate a bit to talk about databases in general and how Podio allows you to leverage calculations to make your database stronger. And so what we're going to talk about today is what's called database normalization. And what normalization is, is trying to reduce and hopefully eliminate any redundancy in data entry, meaning you never want to enter the same piece of data twice within a database. Because if and when you do, this leads to data inaccuracies. Obviously, it takes up time, data inconsistencies as well. Okay, so. Um, you want your database to be normalized. It's a kind of a golden rule of um, creating any kind of system, database system. So um, we're going to talk about how calculations can help us do that within Podio. And you might be a little bit intimidated by calculations. Try not to be. They're pretty simple. And the best application of calculations are when we keep them simple. So we're going to show you how um, we can use some calculations to do that today. So one area where you might be tempted to enter data twice is when it comes to the relationship between tenants and your units. You have your tenants on one hand, they're, they're related to your units, and you might be tempted to uh, indicate your unit status with a category field. So if I were to go to my units and modify the template, it'd be very easy to say, here are my units, I want to be able to track at any given point in time, are they occupied or are they vacant? Are they rented or are they vacant? So you could add a category field and have rented versus vacant. And you could select one for each. The problem with this is that as the number of units grows and the number of tenants grows, um, you're going to have to be entering this data and changing this data way too much for it to be accurate. So you have tenants moving in and out. And then, all right, I moved in a tenant, so I have to go to the unit and change the status from vacant to occupied. And am I going to remember to do that? Maybe you can make some tasks to remind you to do that. But it's really a waste of time. We know that logically a unit, whether it's rented or vacant, is just dependent on whether it has uh, tenants associated with it. So we can use calculations to do this work for us. So I'm going to get rid of this calculation or this category field. And we're going to take a quick look at a couple calculations I have in here. I have the current status as a calculation. All right, so I'm in the units app. Now note that every tenant is related to a unit, which means I'm able to calculate off of it. I have a pretty um, basic logical formula in here that tells Podio to go give me the status, what I'm trying to calculate here for this unit, based on the status of the tenants that might be associated with it. All right, so we can talk through this logical formula. This is JavaScript. It's pretty basic, but you know, you'll be able to use it or copy it into your own system. So I won't go into it too much. But let's close out of here, and let's just look at a couple tenants. Um, we have this one right here, 122 Buffalo Upper shows a current status of vacant. Let's find out why. Let's get into this unit. We have some of our data here, the bedrooms, baths, and square footage. If we scroll down, we see that it has a related tenant. It's Will. OK, Will is inactive. Now I'm scrolling down. This is the only tenant associated. So logically, we know that we have one tenant who's associated, but he is currently inactive. Wouldn't that mean, then, that our unit should be vacant? Yes, that works, right? So our calculation is working. It shows that the current status is vacant. Now it shows future status is rented. How is that possible? Well, let's take a look at Will. Here's Will. He's got a move-in date of the 1st of August. I'm going to dive into his info here. Will is currently inactive, but his move-in date is August 1st. That means in the future, this unit is going to be rented, right? So my future status is rented. Great. Now, what if the first of August comes around and I'm and um, I'm dealing with Will's move in, and I change Will from inactive to active? Do I have to then go to the units app and change the unit to rented? Hopefully not. Our calculation takes care of it for us. Okay. So that's the power of calculations. We're not entering data twice. We're managing the tenants. We're managing when they move in, when they move out. 
and Podio takes care of the rest for our units so that our rent roll is accurate. Let's take a look at another example. Um, what do we have? 30 Custer Lower has, it's currently rented, but in the future it's vacant. So what does that mean? Well, let's scroll down and look at the tenants. Right now I have a tenant, Toby Smith. Okay, so he's currently active, but he's got a move out date of the 31st of July. Okay, so that means he's gone. And on that date, I don't have anybody else associated with this unit. That means that this unit is going to be vacant. Unless I have another tenant who's going to fill that space, uh, that is going to be vacant. So let's do that quickly. Let's add that tenant. So let's say I'm doing my um, advertising. I have a listing open. I go through all that rental process. Let's pick. Um, let's create a. Let's pick this person, Megan Smith. Let's change their associated unit to um, 30 Custer. Was it the lower? I think so. Um, and they're currently inactive, but they're going to move in on August 1st. All right. So what does that do to our units? There we go. It changed the future status to rented. So let's click into our unit and scroll down. We, have, we should have two tenants there. Here's Toby. He's currently active. Good. That means current status should be rented. Megan is inactive currently, but she's moving in on August 1st. So that tells us that it will be rented in the future. I am currently rented, future rented. This unit is all set. I'm ready to go. And then you can set up your views so that you can see your current va vacancies, those units that I need to fill right now, they're sitting empty, and those that are future vacancies, they're going to be empty soon. I like to focus on the future vacancies. It's what I call a leading indicator, a leading KPI. Knowing your current vacancies is, of course, important, but and oftentimes that's too late, right? The second a unit, the day that a unit is vacant, I've lost money for that month, right? Maybe I can um, salvage half the month, but I've already lost there. I've Some kind of process has broken down. If we can focus on our future vacancies and manage our listings and our advertisements, that allows us to fill units before they go empty. All right. So this is a really easy application of calculations. I'm going to show you one more real quick. Um, within each unit here, we have a few things going on. So one, we're related to a deal. So this means we own the property. It's a deal. And we have some basic info, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. Okay. 1100 square feet. We also know the status. So what we can do within our deals if we're interested at a high level to learn something about the rentability of our deals is we have a calculation built in there. So if I click on 122 Buffalo, you see that bait, I use some calculations to tell me the rentable square footage. Uh, if I look at the template, this is not data I enter into the deal. This is data that's calculated. So it's very simply, give me all of the units that are associated with this deal. Tell me how much square footage I have. Also tell me how much of the square footage is rented. And then tell me at a deal level, what is the occupancy? And um, so you're able to see that at a deal level if you want to look at how each deal is performing. So right now I'm at 50% occupancy, 1100 of my 2200 square feet is occupied. All right. So that's just another way you wouldn't want to enter that data manually, you already are maintaining it at the unit level. All right. So don't be intimidated by calculations in Podio. There's a lot you can do with them. They can be a little bit hard at first, but there's a lot out there in forums and, and it's JavaScript, which means there's plenty out there. Uh, available for you to learn from. All right, so leave any comments, any questions you have. If you're frustrated with calculations and you're not sure how to apply them to your situation, leave a comment and hopefully I can help you address that and get everything working in your system. Until uh, next time though, uh, play around with Podio, play around with the calculations, check out all the resources available at IncomeDigs.com and let me know what else you want to see in the future. All right, have a great day. Have a great holiday. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.